Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be talking with you today. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video, but I am hoping to be posting here a bit more frequently than I have. I have been um, definitely online, but not so much on this channel. But I wanted to pop in and share with you a little bit of what I have been doing. I teach creative writing courses and I have quite quite a number of them and I wanted to share with you part of one today that's about creating a great villain. So if this course and the video you're about to see is of interest, please look in the description box below and see if the rest of the course is of interest to you or indeed the rest of my courses. So I will have a link for you below to specifically my course on villains and antagonists, but also a list of all of the courses that I have available online right now. Thank you so much if you have subscribed and left beautiful notes on all of my videos. This channel is absolutely still a channel about writing and communicating in a variety of forms, but is certainly also about creative writing. So I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing, for your kindness. I hope you enjoy this video. I will see you soon. Bye. One of the biggest issues that I see writers run into when they're crafting their villains is that they fall one of two ways. They either make the villain so evil, so terrible, nothing redeeming, nothing that fleshes them out so that you have this sort of well-rounded protagonist and then this very cardboard, fake, cartoonish sort of antagonist. On the other side, what they do is they don't actually make the antagonist all that formidable. They give their protagonist all of these skills and resources and brain power and things like that and then their antagonist doesn't have any of that and doesn't seem at all threatening. So it's very important when you are writing your antagonist that you say to yourself, how can my antagonist be a genuine threat to this story? And those last three words are so important. We can all just sit down and sort of come up with a baddie who, you know, is hates this and he's good at sword fighting and he is really smart and can solve puzzles. I mean, we can think of all kinds of things that, that would be intimidating for someone to possess if they're not on our side. But you're writing a specific story and you're writing a specific protagonist. So what characteristics can you put into your antagonist that would be most intimidating to this protagonist and most intimidating to this story? I'll give you an example. Say I'm writing a story about two, that focuses on two opera singers, our protagonist, who is trying to get the lead role in the next opera and the antagonist who likewise wants the lead role. Now, it just so happens that my antagonist is a really great, fabulous singer who actually has more formal training in opera than my protagonist. That skill in singing in this situation is incredibly intimidating to my protagonist and germane to my story. What would not be terribly intimidating or germane to my story is the fact that on the side she knows Taekwondo. That part, unless you somehow magically weave that into your story, if the plot line is all about trying to get the lead in the next opera, the Taekwondo issue is not that intimidating, which is why you really cannot think of your antagonist in isolation. You need to develop your protagonist and you, your antagonist needs to play off of that protagonist and needs to play off of the protagonist's goals and the main conflict for the story. So you really want to keep that in mind and you want to form an, an antagonist who truly is a genuine threat and you do that in part by saying what are the skills, what are the, whether it's mental or physical, etc. What are the things that are going to be the most intimidating to my protagonist? If your protagonist can very easily overcome your antagonist, you don't have much of a story. So keep in mind, your protagonist is going to be struggling against your antagonist for a while, for a while. So if you can't devise an antagonist in which you can dream up numerous struggle points, numerous points of conflict in your story that are all a bit unique, all a bit different, then you haven't fleshed out your antagonist enough. We need enough 
substance to this person so that the protagonist really feels threatened by it. Now, you can do this in a number of ways. The first being what we talked about with skills. So a really phenomenal just set of skills that makes your protagonist go, this is my equal at least. This person is at least as good as I am, if not better, which makes your, your protagonist the underdog. So the, the level of talent of skill is, is similar. They are, they are equals in this regard. This can be mental capacity. It can be physical skills. Um, there are all kinds of things that it could be. But when you're analyzing a film or thinking about yours, and when you're, say, thinking about your protagonist, and you're coming up with your protagonist's strengths, you need to take your protagonist's strengths and go over to your antagonist and say, all right, how does my antagonist match these? And if they don't match them all, what are the strengths my antagonist has that my protagonist doesn't have? So that they are equally, equally matched. Other things that can make the protagonist seem sort of undefeatable, you know, you want your readers to go, is this possible? Can we beat this person? I don't know. I have to keep reading. And so because you want your readers doing that, we have to sort of sense the idea that the protagonist might actually lose. She might lose because she lacks the skills. Another way that you can think about doing this is make sure you are designing scenes in your story in which we see your antagonist outwit other people. So remember, yes, the antagonist is the antagonist to your protagonist, but this person's also probably an opposing force to other people. So perhaps we can see the antagonist opposing these other people. Perhaps we see our opera singer villain just wowing, wowing judges, wowing audiences and, and just doing so well at this and that. And then maybe we see her sabotage another singer by causing her to get sick or putting something in her drink or things like that so that we can sort of see her overtaking other people. Another thing that's going to then make your antagonist just seem intimidating is just having that antagonist have unsavory goals. Your opera singer antagonist might be your best friend and that's a perfectly fine plot structure. She's still an antagonizing force. She's still preventing the protagonist from getting the lead role perhaps, but that's different than the antagonizing opera singer being also a villain who has mal intent. So if you want somebody who really has this dark presence in your story, then show me her, her malicious intent to my protagonist and to others. Another thing that's going to make that antagonist seem very intimidating is going to be that her actions, his actions require a reaction quickly. You know, if, if a character does something we don't like and we go, I didn't like that, but I can deal with that next week, it's fine. That's not a terribly intimidating antagonist. But if our antagonist does something, if our villain does something and we go, I have to respond now, that's intimidating. So you're ratcheting up. Now it's not just someone who's really skilled. It's somebody who has a bad intent and is after me. If you're not paying attention to me, I, okay, I might think you're really skilled, but you're not focused on me. No, they're skilled. They are against you. Their actions against you require immediate reaction from you. All of these things are going to make that antagonist seem like a true blue threat. You may also want to have scenes in which the antagonist really is demonstrating his or her power over other people. So just, just knowing that they have a certain amount of power, whether that's inherited power or power they earn, I mean, there are all kinds of power, but show me that person dominating over other people. That's going to to be again building in this fleshed out fleshed out character also having a believable backstory a believable reason why they want what they want if and we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit in the course but if, if a character doesn't have a believable goal a believable reason for what they're doing it's just not going to seem that intimidating to us if we can sympathize to the point of understanding why they believe what they believe that is going to make them far far more intimidating and the final two things that you can do to make sure that your your antagonist is a certifiable threat is um, show that person's effect on the story world. Lord of the Rings does this so well. We don't even have to see Sauron all that much, 
but we we absolutely feel the threat of Sauron. We know he has bad intent. We know he's incredibly powerful. That's both told to us and shown to us. He has all these terrible, hideous, horrible henchmen working for him, so he's built up this big army of people. You, you feel the effect of Sauron on the whole story world. Everybody's dealing with the darkness of this, and, and that that really makes him such an intimidating villain because he isn't just having an effect a little bit over here, he's affecting everything, everywhere. It's just tremendous, and um, tremendous, you know, large. So that's part of what makes Sauron such a huge, effective antagonist. Likewise, you think of Jadis the White Witch, in the Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, where she freezes all of Narnia. I mean, it's all of Narnia. She's frozen the whole thing, and everyone is having to respond to her, either by being on her side or not being on her side. And it requires a decisive response, because if you're not on her side, she'll turn you into stone. So, um, you know, worth thinking quickly whether you're on her side or not, and she's not trustworthy to begin with. So having that effect on the story world is truly one of the significant ways that I would say, particularly in a lot of genre fiction and particularly in fantasy, you definitely see villains um, coming to life. And then the last um, point that I would want to make is just adding in the emotional danger that um, is brought about by what your antagonist does. So there's the physical danger, say, Lord of the Rings, all of the danger that Frodo is in as he tries to get that ring to Mordor. There's a lot of physical threat and danger but there's also an emotional threat and you want to make sure that you're considering that too you want your readers to feel what the repercussions emotionally are for the protagonist what are these emotional repercussions to what's happening a really great example of this that i have in the viewing for you is a film called dial m for murder and this is an alfred hitchcock film and the basic premise is that a man He's married to his wife. She inherited a lot of wealth. He does not come from money, not a big worker. So it, she's living off of that money and he just really wants her money. So he plots to kill her. There are complications to this and we are able to actually see the emotional strain that his wife is under because of the actions that he's taken. So part of what makes that powerful is that we see the emotional strain that's happening because of the antagonist. Again, true in Lord of the Rings, the emotional strain that Frodo is under because of Sauron, because of the ring, and, and all of the rest. So don't ignore that emotional strain. Remember, we are connecting with characters through emotion. So you want to make sure that you're not just talking about the physical sort of impediments and the physical challenges of an antagonist, but you're also talking about how these stressors that are happening to your protagonist are affecting him or her emotionally. Okay, in the next video, I'd like us to talk a bit about antagonists' motives and their goals.